Greetings, fellow philosophers. Um, you already have read Mino and uh, answered the questions from the reading guide, so I wanted to just take a few minutes to highlight some of the more important concepts um, from Mino and especially the ones that we'll be considering throughout. Uh, as you will have gathered, um, the main point of the uh, of the dialogue is about the question of virtue, especially uh, what it is, its nature, um, how would we define it, and then can it be taught, can virtue be taught, and then what is its relationship with knowledge. So a few other things that we want to talk about before we talk about that issue and uh, highlight them, and then we'll come back to the question of virtue in just a moment. A couple of things that, um, uh, just little snippets actually throughout the dialogue, but one of them has um, been talked about for centuries by people who have studied this dialogue and it's a call ends up being called Meno's paradox Meno's paradox excuse me um, and it just occurs in a couple lines but it's uh, in, an interesting uh, conundrum that anybody faces who's looking for truth when and find out what the nature of reality is and the paradox goes something like this if you know what you're looking for then you don't need to look for it anymore inquiry is unnecessary but if you don't know what you're looking for how will you found how will you know if you have found it uh, therefore, inquiry is either unnecessary or impossible. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, this idea is um, at the heart of what it means to actually think about these kinds of things. Because, as the last part of the conundrum or the paradox suggests, if you really don't know what you're looking for, if you don't know what the answer is going to look like, then how do you know if you really arrive? And we see that throughout throughout this particular dialogue. Another one is that um, can be a bit of confusing section in the middle about uh, the math problem, the geometry problem. Uh, the point of it isn't to figure out how to do the area of a square. Uh, the question is, what do we do about um, instructing somebody about these kinds of things, and especially the idea of prior knowledge, and whether there are innate forms or um, innate capacities we have to think in certain categories. And this is a question that philosophers have thought about, again, for, for thousands of years. Is Are we blank slates? We'll come to that uh, later in our um, in our course when we talk about John Locke, or are there things that are innate structures to human thought that we can draw on and that are universal for, for all human well, Then we come to the, the main point of the dialogue, which is, um, which is virtue. Uh, we found out that it's not easy to define. Uh, Mino found that out in the very first page of the dialogue as uh, Socrates quizzed him on his understanding of it. Um, we, we know at the end that has something to do with knowledge and right living, but that's about all we, we, we come to. A couple interesting parts of it though, that we really want to highlight. One of them is this difference between knowledge and right opinion. And this is a critical idea to get clear right from the very beginning. Remember he says that if you have right opinion, which is mean, means your intuition, if your intuition happens to be right, that's the same as somebody who's actually studied something in terms of its effect. If you have right opinion or knowledge, you um, you actually end up being able to make similar kinds of decisions, but um, but knowledge is is to be prepared be preferred because it's it's more reliable and generalizable. There's a, a a quote in the middle of the dialogue that is worth repeating. Um, Socrates states um, this bears on true opinion for in fact true opinions as long as they stay are beautiful possessions and accomplish all that is good but they are unwilling to stay very long they run away from the soul of a man so they're not worth much until someone binds them by reflection on the reason for them and that my friend Mino, you know, is recollection as we have agreed before when bound they um, in the first place become knowledge and secondly they abide that's why knowledge is more to be valued than right opinion. Knowledge differs from right opinion by its bound. And what he's saying by this is if you happen to have an opinion about something and it happens to agree with somebody who's studied the issue, you're you're fine. But your your right opinion will, he says, run away if it's not ground. What that he means that um, if you don't have solid reason for what you believe, if you haven't investigated the issue, then at, at some point in time your um, your right opinion will fail you. And that um, it, that right opinion actually turns out to be to be a wrong opinion. So we get to the end of the uh, the dialogue. What do we know about virtue? Well, we know that it's um, 
it's uh, it's somewhat related to knowledge, but not exactly related to knowledge. Because if it was knowledge exactly, if it equaled knowledge, then it could be taught. And uh, Plato gives, uh, sorry, Socrates gives many instances of where where um, where uh, virtue is shown that it can't that it can't be taught, and so it can't be equivalent. So if virtue could be taught, then rich parents is the example that he gives. Who can afford the best tutor should have virtuous children, which they do not. So again, related to knowledge, but not knowledge, um, because we can know to do be good. We can know the right thing, but oftentimes we don't we don't end up doing it. So this is the conclusion that he came to that because it cannot be taught, it must be a gift from the gods. And here's you know, last, a phrase from the last part of the dialogue. It's uh, pro is it proper isn't it proper to call men divine when they without possessing intelligence they bring a multitude of important things to successful issue in what they say what they do and say and so he's kind of at the end saying that we call these people divine who actually are wise beyond the rest of us we actually think that's the spark of divinity and maybe there's something to that he's suggesting so again uh, what can we say at the end it's akin to knowledge but it's not knowledge um, because it can't be taught. And so um, there must be something divine in all of this. So a couple more things before we, we, we sign off here. Um, one of the things is, is that, um, that Mino says is that Socrates can be maddening. Um, you are in both an appearance and other ways like a stingray in the sea, which benumbs whatever it touches. I think you've done um, something of that sort to me. My tongue, my soul, my are numb truly I cannot answer you and yet I've said many things about virtue thousands of times to a host of people and as I thought spoken well but now I'm utterly at a loss to say what even it is and that's how Socrates oftentimes ends or people who talk to Socrates oftentimes and they feel, feel both fuddled like they don't really know um, what they're talking about and um, have shown to be either inconsistent or foolish in their um, in their uh, uh, previous opinions. So I wanted to talk just a second about that, about the Socratic um, method, this idea of asking questions and forcing people uh, to, uh, to think about what it is that they state that they believe. And that's a huge part of, of Mino as well, this idea of questioning and probing and engaging with students on a mutual path of discovery, where both the teacher and the learner end up things. And so um, we, we see three examples of this with three different types of students. Um, Mino, who is at the start, who, who genuinely does seem, seem curious and wants to learn um, through Socratic dialogue. He's, he's shown to be somebody who doesn't know as much as he thought, but that's okay with Mino because he really did want to learn. And that process of destruction of ideas is actually a, a positive development, intellectual development for him, because he comes to a point where he's more receptive to, um, to further dialogue and questioning investigation. A little bit different with the slave boy. Um, he was just kind of standing on the sidelines. It wasn't really engaged or involved, and he was kind of singled out. You might imagine an unsuspecting middle school kid all of a sudden being thrust in the middle of a conversation much like many middle school kids um, going to school and being required to learn things that they're not um, prepared to learn. And the questioning goes in a different route. He is actually shown to be smarter than he thought he was. And so in that case, Socratic questioning drew out from him very important ideas and things that he knew, didn't know that he knew, but he actually ended up knowing. So dialogue can have that, that effect as well. Anatus, he's the one at the very end who is very complimentary a Protagoras. Um, he reveals himself as somebody who was both ignorant and uninformed and didn't want to um, to learn anymore and kind of walked away disgusted when his ideas were ideas were challenged. Last thoughts about this before um, before we conclude here. Um, this, this idea about being virtuous and, and how do people become virtuous. Um, I thought when I've read this before, what would what would Socrates have thought if he uh, knew the parable of the sower 
and this idea that the sower would go out and sow seeds and whether or not the seed grew depending upon, depended upon the soil that the uh, seed fell. And um, I think from this dialogue, we, we note how important it is for a mind to be receptive to being taught, curious and engaged, involved. And if, if not, then it's very difficult for that seed to grow. And in this case, it was very difficult for anybody to learn. As in the case of, um, of the last individual that I came across. So um, interesting thought to consider as we consider uh, our instruction is the kinds of individuals that we run into and what happens when we run into soil that isn't very fertile and how do we break up that ground so that seed can grow because if mind isn't receptive to ideas then there's very little that can be done can be done with it um, so some just some um, uh, some summary thoughts on Mino and uh, some takeaways from uh, from the dialogue that we will be referring to throughout the course. <laughs>